What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to an NFL Week 14 recap for the 2015 NFL season. Today, December 14th, is the last game of Week 14, which is going to be the New York Giants at the Miami Dolphins. We all know that the Giants may lose. I don't think they have anything to play for at this point. They, they had everything that they needed in their favor, and they just went out there and lost. So, look, bro, listen, I don't have time for that. I'm not even going to get into them right now. I don't even want to do the recap about them. I have a feeling that they're going to probably win tonight, but it's it's too late, too little too late, man. You let the Eagles start doing whatever they're doing, which we're going to get into uh, right now. But um, if you guys wanted to see the previous uh, recap for Week 14, the early game to kick off the week, which was December 10th on Thursday with the Vikings and the Cardinals, definitely look back on YouTube for the um, the last recap, obviously. And um, you can always download it for free on the Android or iTunes, uh, G Myers World Podcast. With the Android, you have to go into the Podcast Source app, which is an app inside the Google Play Store to find the G Myers World Podcast. But if you're on iTunes, it's already there. Um, pretty much, you just got to download it for free for all the Apple users. So, all right, December 10th is already done. Let's go ahead and jump into the Sunday games, December 13th, 2015. First of all, the Bills at the Eagles. The Bills 20, Eagles 23. If you watch this game like I did, you can see that the Bills jumped out. It's pretty much they jumped out with a head of steam. They thought they had everything under control. They thought they were ready to go. You know, Semi Watkins, big touchdown, all that BS. Great. The biggest thing about this week, though, I understand that a lot of people have a problem with Chip Kelly. I understand that a lot of things have been said about Chip Kelly. Um, you know, it, it's... it's um, it's a lot of controversy surrounding Chip Jelly Kelly. I understand every single part of that. You know the problem that doesn't really work in the NFL? When you run your mouth and you don't have the team that can back it up. And the Bills are not a bad team. It's just that they don't have, I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's a lack of leadership. I, I don't know. You, it just doesn't seem that a trash talking coach wins. And Rex Ryan kinds of, you know, he kind of leads a team that he wants them to, uh, you know, he wants them to play freely and have fun, but it's like he doesn't have enough control at the end of the day of his, his unit. I don't, I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. It's sort of like, look, when you, when you control something or um, you're the leader of something, you can have a nice relationship with all the people that you work with. But at the end of the day, they have to understand when it's time for business, let's go out there and handle business. Sort of like a Pete Carroll, you know, like, look, let's have some fun. Let's joke around. You're laughing around on the sidelines. But we're here to do business. We're here to do a job. We're here to win. This is the reason why I just, I, I don't know. I thought the Bills could pull it off because the Eagles, they, they, they disappointed. But in the NFC East, I'm like I said, I've been saying this for a while. I'm not going to, be, I wasn't going to be shocked if the Eagles came out of the NFC East because it's such a horrible division, um, you know, similar to the, what is it, the AFC South? Like, it's just so garbage that, you know, it doesn't really matter who's doing what. Anybody can come out at any time. And the Giants had so many chances to lock up this division. And they, you know, they just couldn't do it. And I don't know what's going to happen over the next three weeks. But, you know, bottom line, I, I see the Eagles coming out of it. Because even when the Eagles are supposed to lose, they somehow pull out a win. And it just seems like, okay, they beat the Patriots. All right, they were riding high. Maybe they're going to lose. They come out and pull one out. Of, they pulled out against the Bills. You know, um, I, I don't really know what else to really, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say about it because at, I knew it was going to happen, sort of. Because LaShawn McCoy, but when you when you move on from something, look, I understand. Look, he voiced his opinion, right? He voiced his opinion about Chip Kelly. All right, Chip Kelly may have been doing some things that are questionable, getting rid of whatever, blah, 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 blah. When you make it all about that, you have to understand something, bro. It's very tough as a running back to do the shit that LaShawn McCoy did because you need everything to work. You need your old line to work. The offensive scheme has to work. You know what I'm saying? Tyrod Taylor throwing picks at the end of the game. Look, you, you need a lot of things to work in your favor in order for you to come through as a running back. So you cannot do the things that he did and lead up to this point and you're just a running back. If you're a quarterback and everything falls on you and you touch the ball the most, okay, that's fine. But I just knew that this wasn't gonna happen in their favor in the back of my mind because number one is Rex Ryan. And I don't, look, Rex Ryan is a great motivator, all that stuff probably. I don't know, he, he seems like a great guy. The players like him, but at some point you gotta shut the F up and just play football. I've been saying that since week one. Just shut the F up. You know what I'm saying, bro? Just let these guys understand. Look, don't say nothing. Go out here, let's play. It's work for the Patriots. It can work for any team. Just shut up. 
You know, sometimes you just got to shut up and go out there and play. And that's something that a Rex Ryan coach team is going to have to learn. And it's as simple as that. As far as the Eagles go, they came out there and played very, very well. Bradford, I can't take that mustache. I don't think he should have that kind of mustache. It's too thick. He should trim it down a little bit. He looks like, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say what he looks like, but the bottom line is he has to, like, trim that down a little bit. He, it's starting to look a little freaky. You know what I'm saying, bro? I'm, I'm, I'm really not enjoying it. Um, but they came out and they played well enough to win. You know, Darren Sproles was involved a little bit more on the offense. The defense played a lot better. Um, you know, I, I just, it, it was it was a little bit more of decent play calling. And that's pretty much it, man. It wasn't like, it, they, they were like, oh, it was it was lights out and shit. Like, it wasn't like that. They just played a well-balanced game. They pulled it out. And you got to give Philadelphia credit because there was a lot of stuff building up to this. And if they, if the Eagles would have lost this game, it would have kind of proved everybody else's point about the alleged prejudice behavior of Chip Kelly. So now this kind of downplays it, that the guys came out and played for him and they beat the Bills. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, for everything, that all the hysteria that's surrounding it, it kind of lessens it right now, you know? But we don't know what's going to happen later on. But I think that the Eagles may be, you know, suitable enough to pull it out. That's just my opinion. Um, but all the hype that went into this game, it was really nothing that showed. Uh, at, at the end of the day, it was like I was left without you know, any kind of release. Like, it was just, okay, uh, this game's over, all right, whatever. You know, Tyrod Taylor throws a pick, they, they kneel the ball out, and it's like, there was nothing to, the, the dramatic buildup did not entice me, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, at the end of the day, what have we learned, young men and young women? Shut the F up and handle your business first. Then you can talk later. Or if you're gonna talk trash, be in a more suitable position. Have a better team, a better head coach. You know what I'm saying? Do shit like that, you can't, it's a it's a it's a situation that you have to know what's what what's around you and that's where i think Lashawn mccoy screwed up seahawks at ravens there's not a lot to talk about with this with this game the seahawks are on a roll the ravens are just like broken down um they they're not they're, they're not they're just not they're very in they're injury battered they don't have anything going on for them um nobody expected them to win this game not even the, not even the players moms um, it, it, it was a very disgusting thing, but let's talk about Russell Wilson. He's playing out of his mind, and I know it's against a bad defense, but these type of games build confidence. You know, uh, the Seahawks, I've said it, once Jimmy Graham went down, I told every Seahawk fan, even the Seahawks fans that are in New York that, that I talk to on a regular basis, I said to them, I said, listen, they're going to be a much better team without Jimmy Graham. You're fucking crazy. You don't know what the fuck you talk. Okay, bro, listen, you got a curse though? I just said, like, bro, you got a curse though? Like, bro, I will slap you across the face though. But the bottom line is what I bit, what I envisioned was that it was too much pressure on Russell Wilson to get the ball to one guy. He has a lot of bum receivers, Baldwin and all these other bums, that do things for him. And it's easier to get the ball to guys like that as opposed to, you know, a Jimmy Graham that's a star that everybody's going to be covering and treating a little bit differently. A lot more attention. Even though people think that, you know, one guy's getting double teamed, it's easier to get the ball to the other guy. It's not that simple, especially when your offensive coordinator is an asshole. So you have to figure out now, with all that stuff, that there's no direct target for Russell Wilson that you know he's going to every time. So what happens? Now what happens is he can get the ball to anybody. He's more free to move, whatever. And it's not that much pressure. And that's pretty much what happened. This is a situation that has happened uh, right now. Russell Wilson is playing out of his mind. I thought that Ciara was going to destroy his life. I thought he was doing too much BS with Ciara. I just thought it was too much, you know, hysteria going on. Yeah, I may have been wrong. Because now it just looks like, all right, he's settled in. He's ready to go. And he's just throwing up mad touchdowns, bro. And it's a joke. Like, but... Again, it's against the Ravens. Um, that Lockett kid is really good, man. He's really fast, too. I saw him beat, uh, what is that, Webb on the right side. It, it, was, it was getting really, really nasty, bro. I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Once the blowout started to get uncontrollable and I started to vomit in my mouth, I just had to change the channel, bro. I, you know, the Ravens are so beat down, and I wanted the Seahawks to score 100 points, but I just didn't want to see it visually. But it, it was a brutal beat down. And, um, you know, pretty much I think the Ravens will come back next year pretty strong. That's why I'm not really worried about them. I think they will come back strong next year. I think they have a better foundation than a lot of other uh, organizations in the NFL, and I think they'll be fine. Uh, they just have to take, the, take this, um, you know, they got to just take this one, bro. You got to take this L for this, this season and come back strong next year. As far as the Seahawks, they may be a threat. Like I've been telling people, bro, once Jimmy Graham went down, that might have been the best thing that happened to them. And I know it sounds bad, but, you know, and I don't wish injury upon any player, but it might have been the best thing that happened for the Seahawks. And they should consider getting rid of Jimmy Graham, you know, in my opinion, because he just doesn't fit their scheme with that current offensive coordinator. 49ers at the Browns, 49ers 10, the Browns 24. You know, Johnny Manziel played well. I think he had one pick. 
um, pretty much he's gonna be uh, excitement, you know, for for teams, for, for 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 teams, for players, for the for the fans. He's excitement to watch because we don't know what his ceiling is, you know. And um, the reason that I want Mike Pettin fired and um, never to coach again in the NFL is just because his face looks like a, a splattered Play-Doh. I don't know if you guys remember, like, when we, you know, when I was a kid, Play-Doh was the big thing, you know what I'm saying? You could put it in the machine, make fake spaghetti. Like, his face just looks like a, a really, really bad, um, you know, egg. Like, Humpty Dumpty, he just looks really disgusting. I don't want to see his face. I think he should be fired. Um, but if he was able to play a little bit more, uh, Johnny Manziel, we would have more of a gist of what he is. And it would be easier for the Browns to probably get rid of him if they didn't want him because other teams will see him play. But the way that they've treated him, you know, he, he farted in a meeting. Okay, bro, uh, you're not starting. Like, Mike Patton just did whatever he had to do to, to affect his kid. And um, it, it's, it wasn't – a lot of people think that, uh, think that um, the way that he did it wasn't fair. I, I don't know. As far as the partying thing goes, you know, like, I don't, I don't – I can't really gauge it. I don't know if it was an agreement made – amongst player and coach i understand but it's just something about mike Patton. like you just don't want to respect him you know what i'm saying bro you look at his face like okay you know whatever bro you run in your mouth all right whatever i don't really hear anything you know what i'm saying that's the kind of face he has so i don't blame i don't blame this guy uh johnny manzel for any reason for not listening to him i'm being you know you, you gotta have some kind of fortitude and i don't believe that mike Patton is the guy to coach in any i don't think he should coach a pv league you know mike Patton is a joke um excuse me but um the, the, the Browns played well enough, and people have to understand, all they have is Gary Barnage, right? They don't really have any of the receivers um, to do anything with. Um, I really can't think of any other guy on the team that is, is relevant, that does anything. Um, so Johnny Manziel is pretty much playing with nobody, and uh, he, he's able to find a way to get the ball to players to make plays, and, and that's the bottom line. So you got to give him credit for that, but we haven't seen enough. I haven't seen enough. I don't know if you've guys seen enough, but I haven't seen enough to call him the guy for the Browns. I have, I really honestly have not seen enough of this guy. So that's just my personal opinion with it. It wasn't anything exciting about the game. Everybody kind of figured the Browns would win this game. The 49ers are ass. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, getting back to the whole situation, I believe the Browns were in place for the number one pick before they won this game. So I don't know why they're starting to win now. But that's another story. The 49ers, there's not really a lot to talk about. Um, we know about the whole Kaepernick situation. We know about Blaine Gabbert. We know about the fact that Tom Sula, he came out of nowhere and he was going to be a head coach and everybody was laughing. And now we see why it was laughable. It was a joke from the beginning and it's going to be a sad joke for the fans in the end. The 49ers have been horrible. They suck. And that, 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 that it is what it is, guys. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, that they were doing something that's... No, they're garbage. It, it, it's, it's horrible. They suck. And I don't know if they're going to be that much better next year uh, as opposed to the Ravens. So let's just keep that in mind. But, you know, Johnny Manziel had a good day, but it was, you know, look, bro, I, 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 it, he didn't excite me. You know what I'm saying, bro? And if, you, if, you're not, if you're not wowing me, I'm not going to be excited when I talk about it. And I haven't seen enough of him. And, you know, pretty much the way that Mike Penn handled his starting and being out there affected his overall capability of anything now. Because we don't know. You're playing against the 49ers, but we got the rest of the season. Let's see what happens. Because other teams that he's playing has to try to make the playoffs. So let's see what happens. We'll see if um, Johnny Manziel is the real Johnny football and um, if he's all the all the if he's worth all the hysteria that's surrounding him. Lions at the Rams. Lions 14, the Rams 21. This was the battle of the worst coaches in the league. Okay, Jim Caldwell, Jeff Fisher. Um, Je Jeff Fisher is a guy that you can look at his face. You can see that he's aging by, by 10 years every week now because the pressure is really on him. I don't know if people are listening to my podcast that are within the NFL, but he's just getting no respect this season. Usually they try to give him a pass, whatever like that, but I've been adamant about this guy. He, he serves no purpose in the NFL, none. He's made a lot of money. He's like Robin Hood, but he's not giving back to the poor. You know what I'm saying, bro? With the money he's been stealing from these organizations, he, he he's not worth it. And at some point, you got to make a move in another direction. They won the game. You know, Todd Gurley had a big game. Okay, that's great. The, the Rams suck. And, um, you know, Nick Foles was a bad choice. He should be released uh, in the offseason um, if he hasn't been fired right now during the game. And um, the only thing that I could see about the team, you know, Trey Mason has been a freaking letdown for the most part. Um, Tavon Austin is a baller. Um, you know, Kevin, uh, what is that, Britt? Kenny Britt? You know, he, he's been a joke for a while. I, I don't know what's going to come of the Rams. I do know that if Jeff Fisher returns as the head coach, don't expect much from them. Jim Caldwell and the Lions, what do you expect from these guys, bro? The soccer dad, though? Like, this was really, when I saw both these coaches playing against each other, it made me realize that some people are just very, very lucky in this world. 
because these two guys are head coaches and they suck as head coaches and they suck as whatever the F they're being paid to do and they're able to do it. You know, and this is why, these are some of the reasons why people have to understand that America is great. Regardless of a lot of things that happen, it's a lot of things that we don't like. It's a lot of stuff that goes on that's crazy. When you can look at two bum coaches actually face off and it's actually something that people watch, you know, you gotta, you gotta be appreciative and understand that some people are just a lot more lucky than others. And, and that's the bottom line. This game disgusted me. Other than Todd Gurley's runs, this game disgusted me. You know, Golden Tate got, you know, you know garbage time touchdowns and he had another touchdown before. Like, I, I, look, bro, this game, uh, it just disgusted me. The battle of the garbage goddamn coaches in the league. Okay, that's what happened in this game. And I'm disgusted to even have to even be talking about it right now. Titans at the Jets. Titans 8, Jets 30. The Jets did what they were supposed to do. They completely dominated Mariota. Mariota did catch a touchdown. I don't know how the hell that, even, that play even happened, but he was getting a blood beat out of him. Um, you know, he was a rookie. The Jets came out and they played hard. Definitely uh, something that the Jets needed to do. Um, I, I still don't like Todd Bowles' body shape. It looks like he's, you know, small at the top and it gets very, very wide at the bottom and it's starting to piss me off. Um, we have to go ahead and see exactly what happens as far as what's going to transpire with the Titans next year, but I do think that Mariota is a very good prospect, and I like what he has to offer to the NFL. Unfortunately for him, he's going to need some weapons around him, and that's what he's lacking. Um, but, uh, you know, the Jets the Jets, were the, the Jets played like they were supposed to play and how they should have been playing for most of the season. They played like a veteran team. They were dominant, and they destroyed the Titans, and that's what you're supposed to do. When you're the better team, you're supposed to play like this. And I know it felt good finally for Jet fans to just see them go out there and beat the hell out of a team. You know what I'm saying? With that defense you got with the, you know Fitzpatrick and you know all these boys out there, they're out there playing the game. And you know everybody, they're starting to get into a certain sync to where okay, Brandon Marshall, you know you got what is that Decker over there? You got guys that are ready to play. Um, Ivory, all these boys are really playing. The other dude was doing some work too. Um, I can't remember his name. He was doing some work out there, but they're starting to have a balanced attack and they're playing like they should and it's looking good I don't think they're gonna do anything if they if they possibly do make the playoffs But that was good to get them that win right there You know what I'm saying? I got to give them credit where it's due But I don't think that they're ready to, to win any games in the playoffs even with Darrell Rivas healthy and you know You know passing the concu concussion protocol and things like that. I don't see the Jets doing anything So let's just be honest about it. We're getting to you know, we're getting close to the playoffs uh, Steelers at Bengals. Steelers 33, the Bengals 20. Um, of course, we know Andy Dalton is out. Um, um, what is it? M McCarron is in. He's a bum. That screen pass that he threw that pick on, wow. Okay, bro. Uh, the Steelers, they look good, man. They look good. Uh, they're dangerous because if Big Ben Rifflesberger is playing and he is able to utilize all those weapons around him, that receiving core is probably the best in the league. And I don't know if they get a lot of credit for that. You know what I'm saying, bro? But they are the best wide receiving core, in my opinion, in the league. You know, uh, and that's including every team. Everybody, the, you know, Bryant, Antonio Brown, um, you know, Wheaton, they're the best core. They're, you know, they got a good running game. The Steelers are dangerous. If they, if they somehow are able to, you know, to get into the playoffs, man, I don't know. You know, they, they can upset any team. They, they can actually, I can see the Steelers going to the Super Bowl. Like, it, it's not like it's something that cannot happen. It's something that is very, very visible and something that is very realistic to be honest with you I, i'm just letting guys understand man because looking at them play even if andy dalton played i'm not sold on andy dalton so it's not like i really give it i don't care about the situation right he's injured again we don't wish injury upon anybody but i think the steelers win this game regardless it, you know it doesn't matter and that's what makes it very very dangerous so um overall big ben is looking good he's able to make certain plays uh that that are needed to be played he's, he's still a top quarterback in this league you know hurt not hurt whatever, taking himself out the game because he felt like he was seeing, you know, pink ponies, whatever. He's still a top player in this league and he's still Big Ben and he's showing it. So I'm not surprised about anything that happened with this game. Um, obviously, I don't expect much for the Bengals. They may win the division, but I don't expect much from them after that. And that's with Andy Dalton as well. You know what I'm saying, bro? It ain't McCann, but what was it, McCarron's fault? I know, look, the team, Marvin Lewis, he has to go take a hike, bro, by himself in the woods and just never come back. And that's pretty much it. That's what the Bengals need right now. They just need another coach. That's all. Colts at Jaguars. Jaguars 51, the Colts 16. I'm a, you know, listen, it, it's time for people to understand that Tim Hasselback is 90 years old. He got injured like 17 times in this game. I don't know why he just kept on coming back. Like, nobody wants to see you, Hasselback. You're a bum. Uh, the Jaguars, I told you about Blake Bortles, bro. I've been saying, I've been telling you that this Jaguars team, bro, 
wow. You know, Hearns and them boys, they're, they're ready to play. I, I, you know, I don't know what else I have to say to you guys, bro, but when you, when I see stuff on, on the TV screen, when I see guys putting effort out, when I see guys working, I give guys credit. You know, it's a lot of guys that can just lay down and say, you know what, we suck, it's over, I'm not going to do it. The Jaguars have not been playing like that this year. They've been losing games, you know, Borders been jumping across a lot of scrimmage, throwing the passes and shit. It's been a lot of craziness going on, but they've been playing with so much effort and so much heart. And that's what you need to win most of the time. When you don't have the talent and you're just playing with pure guts, you're going to pull out some victories. And they demolished the Colts. They demolished the Colts, bro. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't even close. They just started beating the hell out of them. It was really, really bad. It was child abuse. Bro, it was bad. It was very, very bad, man. Um, you know, Chuck Pagano will be fired probably at the end of the season. I don't think Jim Mercer is going to have him around. Um, he, he's pretty much done. Uh, it, it, it's over. That division is horrible, and you can't pull it out. You're getting blown out like this by the Jaguars. I watched a lot of this game, and I was very, 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 like, shocked that they were getting beat like that all over the place. It, it was really, really crazy, man. Maybe Julius Thomas was a good pickup. You know, he's had a touchdown in the last whatever amount of games, and, you know, the, the team is starting to click a little bit, and you just never know, man. You never know in this league, but I did not see this coming, bro. This is crazy. This beatdown was outrageous. The Colts looked like crap. Um... I don't know. I really just don't know. But with the Jags balling like that, I don't even know if the Colts are safe in that division anymore. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, even with Andrew Luck back, Andrew Luck is bu Andrew Luck is a bum. So, I don't know. People are like, yeah, we got to get Andrew Luck back. For what? For him to throw 19 picks in one game? Okay, bro, good luck with that. You know what I'm saying? The Colts are done, man. And Chuck Pagano will be gone. And the rest is history. Chargers 3, the Chiefs 10. Again, I'm going to tell you this about the Chiefs right now. It's a very, very hard thing to say when people are injured. You know what I'm saying? But when Jamal Charles went down, I thought the Chiefs would play a lot better. Again, when you have a guy that you have to get the ball to, it's not the same as it was back in the day. This is different now. Things, people are smarter. People are spy getting and bounty gating and doing crazy shit. They, 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 they focus on that one player. So it makes it harder for people to be successful. The Chiefs have been a much better team without Jamal Charles. And I know people are like, yo, bro, you're crazy. Okay, maybe I am crazy. You know, bro, maybe I was born sick. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, yeah, look, I don't know. I don't, I'm just going to tell you this right now. The Chiefs have been a much better team without Jamal Charles. Yeah, this was a tough game. The Chargers got like 19 fourth downs in the last, the last, um, you know, last drive to try to do something. But it was exciting towards the end. Um, and I thought that some pass interference that should have been called, especially the one with, well, I don't know. The one with Gates is kind of questionable, but it is what it is. Um, they lost the game. It, it, it's not like the Chargers, if they won this game, was going to mean anything. The Chargers have sucked for a while now. Um, but the Chiefs have played better. They, they, they're able to pull out games. And as bad as the games have been and how gritty they've been, they're able to pull them out. And I just think, in my opinion, that they're a better team without Jamal Charles. Not a lot of excitement. Obviously, they had 10 points. But they're able to play differently and to keep the, the, the defense guessing a lot more than if Jamal Charles is on the field. That's just my opinion. Not a lot to talk about with this game. It was obviously 10-3. to 3. No excitement in there. Chiefs, congratulations on that win. And they're pushing to making the playoff push. Redskins at Bears. Redskins 24, the Bears 21. Um, Cousins tried to give this game away with a pick late. It didn't work out for the Bears, though, because, um, you know, uh, this, this, this other guy, Jay Cutler, you know, he, he doesn't know how to really do what he's supposed to do in certain key situations. But... I can't blame him totally. He did make a lot of bad throws, but Robbie Gold has to be fired. He can't make field goals. Look, bro, Cutler's going to give you what Cutler can give you. If Cutler gives you enough enough to get you in the field goal range and Gold misses a kick, I no longer can blame Cutler. I, Cutler missed a lot of throws in this game, but Alshon Jeffrey made him look good. And, he, you know, the receiver sometimes, whatever, the receiver makes you, you know, your guys look good, whatever it is, whatever the situation is. You know what I'm saying? It is a such. It, it's a very difficult thing to try to explain because even if the quarterback is garbage, we've seen this before with Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss. I'm trying to make it clear for a lot of the veteran guys that have been leaving comments on my videos. You know that we talk about a lot of the stuff that's happened in history. A lot of garbage quarterbacks are able to get away with it because of their receiver. That's what was happening yesterday with Jay Cutler. Okay, that was. All Sean Jeffrey doing what he does and making Jay Cutler look very, very good. Now, regardless of all of that, I cannot blame Jay Cutler for this loss simply because Robbie Gold is a bum burger piece of shit. And these kickers are so horrible and it's so bad 
And I'm so happy that the NFL moved the kickback because now you're getting to see these guys have been getting away with it for so long. Now they have to actually earn their money. Robbie Gold, single-handedly, again, I think this is like his second or third game costing the Bears. He should not return as a Chicago Bear. Because I, I can't sit here and blame Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler gave you what Jay Cutler's going to do. He's going to get the ball to his star receiver. He's going to get yards. Guys are going to get in field goal range. The kicker has to make the kick. Th that's it. You know, Kirk Cousins, he's going to throw picks in crazy situations. You know what I'm saying, bro? But he does enough for the team to win. And I can't be mad at Jay Gruden. for You know, I'm mad at Jay Gruden for the way he has treated RG3, but not for his decision decision for benching RG3. Let me just be very, very clear about that. Because if you got somebody that gives you a better chance to win and it's a better fit, make the move. Even if it is a star elite quarterback and his face is on all the season ticket holders' tickets. It doesn't matter, bro. So, at the end of the day, Robbie Gold cost the Bears this game. The Bears made a good push, you know, a good push. Lanford's looking good. Forte was looking good. Everything was going right. They came back. Robbie Gold is the kicker. S Single-handedly, the kicker cost them this game. That's it. Falcons at the Panthers. Falcons 0, Panthers 38. The Falcons are the worst team right now in the NFL. That's including the 49ers. The Fal Listen, Matt Ryan should not return as a Falcon. They should look in another direction. They should look somewhere else. Somewhere else, I don't care if it's under a rock, you know what I'm saying, bro? Yo, in purgatory, go find something else. Matt Ryan is a goddamn bum. And I've been saying it even when he was winning. I'm, yo, I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. Atlanta fans, you know I got love for you. And listen, Atlanta, Georgia, I love you guys. Your quarterback is a bum. He's horrible. He has to go. Now let's talk about good things. The Panthers look like a goddamn force. Keekly just keep picking the ball up. I don't know what the hell's going on. Has Keekly always been picking the ball like this? I, I've never seen this. This man is just every, he's a goddamn ball hawk. He's like Brian Dawkins, but that fucking middle linebacker. This is crazy, bro. I, I don't know what's happening right now. All I'm going to tell you is this. Ted Ginn made a fall out of his drops. Cam Newton is balling out of his mind. I don't care if he's doing gyrations. I don't care what he's doing. I don't care how many letters moms want to write. Yo, Cam Newton, you're doing your thing. Keep doing it, boy. I love what I'm seeing. I saw it once you beat the Seahawks that you became a different person. Kudos to you and that team. Riverboat Ron deserves credit. Jonathan Stewart, I don't know if you're still hurt, whatever like that. Greg Olson, you better not be hurt next week because I need you in my starting lineup. Um, Panthers defense, though. Josh Norman, them boys. Keekly, lock up. All these boys out there, man. Uh, Thomas Davis, you guys are unbelievable. You guys deserve a lot of credit. You guys, you know, me, I did not see this coming without Kelvin Benjamin. You surprised me. Um... Congratulations, man, to everybody in North Carolina, the Panthers fan base. You guys deserve a lot of praise, man. Your team is playing out of their goddamn mind. I don't, I don't know what else to say, man. This was a, a brutal game that could have been a lot more brutal, but Riverboat Ron pulled back a little bit towards the end and just made it a little bit more merciful. I wouldn't have, I would have completely destroyed them. But god damn, the Panthers are really, really good, man. I just don't want them to lose in in the first round of the playoffs. If they lose the second round, okay, whatever. Just don't lose after your first round by. Please, guys. I want to see Cam Newton do something that I don't believe has ever been done in history. Just come out there and just completely dominate. Oh, my God. Bro, I would be very, very scared of the Panthers. As I look at that Panther doing the row right now, I'm scared of the icon. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, God damn, bro. They, they just the Falcons are so garbage. They they really suck, man. I, I hate them. Look look, bro. And I don't I don't hate anybody, bro. I yo they disgust me. And Matt Ryan, aka Matty Dry Ice, just leave the facility and never come back. They won't miss you. Saints at Buccaneers. The Saints twenty four, Bucks seventeen. The Bucks had a chance to win this game. I picked the Saints simply because I'm gonna pick the Saints. I just know that the Saints are not gonna lose. You know th these kind of games like this, the Saints always surprise you and. As much as I said that Drew Brees needs to go, Drew Brees still got a little bit left in the tank. I don't know how much more, but the Bucks though, you, you they could have won this game. They had a lot of opportunities to win it. Um, J Jameis Winston made some errant throws or whatever like that. You know, he's a rookie. Things like that going to happen. But at the end of the day, when these division games happen, you just don't know what the Saints, bro. The Saints is a very, very dangerous team, bro, because you just they, they have a lot of ways to score, and you just don't know what the hell they're going to do or what they're going to bring out. And that's pretty much what happened, man. They they were able to pull this one out, um, with, uh, you know, at the Bucks. Uh, not not a very overall exciting game, but a game that was hard fought between two teams that didn't know what the hell was going on, um, for the most part. 
um, Brandon Brown over there trying to get people ejected, bro, getting his helmet torn off and shit. It was a, it was a decent game. I can't really say I didn't enjoy most of it. It was okay. Um, and I, I do have to say that Drew Brees did show me that he can still throw the football. But, you know, overall, uh, you know what I'm saying? Rating for all the games I watched, uh, it was okay. Um, and the Bucks, they have a lot of work to do. Um, first of all, I have a lot of work to do by firing their head coach as soon as the season's over. And I know that, that he's he's doing a decent job with what he has. Love Express not the answer there. He'll be fired probably early next year if he comes back. Whatever. Um, but I want to see what happens with Sean Payton and Drew Brees. What they're going to do. Are they going to build around them? Are they going to get rid of them? I'm very excited to see. But yeah, they still have enough to win. And uh, for all the Saints fans that's been riding me on Twitter and in the comment section, you're probably right. Drew Brees and, uh, Drew Brees and Sean Payton are not, uh, are not the uh, problem. <laughs> Excuse me. You're probably right about that. Raiders at Broncos. Raiders 15, Broncos 12. Khalil Mack is a beast. Khalil Mack should have went number one overall above J uh, Jadavian Clowney. And even though Jadavian Clowney had a decent game yesterday, Khalil Mack is undoubtedly the better player. Five sacks, bro. Just completely destroyed Osweiler's life. And this is the reason why people have been saying, um, you know, when Peyton Manning is healthy, put Peyton Manning in. Because Osweiler has done enough to win games prior to this one, but he doesn't do anything that makes him the concrete starter you know what i'm saying bro he's not like that 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 guy that's like oh we gotta put him in that guy like he's not that guy and he showed it he showed it yesterday he was getting hit a lot vernon davis dropped the key first down but vernon davis always dropped key first downs that's why the 49ers didn't care when they were getting rid of him and they're like yo get the f out he's always dropping the ball um so it wasn't all it wasn't all oswala's fault so let's be fair about that Oswala made throws, receivers dropped the ball. A lot of receivers dropped the ball. A lot of receivers dropped the ball, came into them. But the Raiders, bro, you know, Khalil Mack was paying out. He was throwing these big linemen down to the ground, and they were holding him. He was still throwing them to the ground like little kids and sacking Osweiler. So it was all about the Raiders. Let's be honest about it. It was all about the Raiders, bro. It wasn't. It had nothing to do with the Packers, I mean, the, the uh, Broncos. It was all about the Raiders. Yeah, Vernon Davis is a bum. We all know that, all that stuff. Yeah, whatever. But Osweiler is not the answer. Um, at this point, um, based on what I've been seeing from him, I, I don't like it. I don't like what he's... Uh, listen, he 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 made throws that, that receivers dropped, but even with that, you got to find a way to win. You know, Tom Brady had a game where nobody was catching the ball, and he just said, F it, I'm about to just start running myself. You got to figure out ways to win, and you got to do it on, a, on, you know, on the go. But when you're fighting for a job and trying to prove that you're the guy that's going to lead the Broncos, you can't you can't play like this. You got to bench Vernon Davis and you got to do other things, but you can't, you can't lose games like this to the Raiders. You just can't do it. It just can't happen, and that's what happened. But like I said, again, it's all about the Raiders and Khalil Mack. That boy is on. Yo, that boy is crazy. Five sacks and the way he did it, though. Like, the way he was doing it. God damn, man. Like, bro, he he he's a force. Him and Aldon Smith. If Aldon Smith wasn't drinking and driving around elementary schools in the early morning, like driving through the actual school being drunk, and he was playing right now, <laughs> wow, man. Wow, that's all I can really say, bro. But kudos to the Raiders, man. The Raiders for pulling that one out. Great win. Good victory. Cowboys at Packers. Cowboys 7, Packers 28. Des Bryant's catch being overturned again was a bad deja vu for all the Cowboys fans. In both cases, you see the ball move. Look, guys, I don't know what the rule is. I don't know what's a catch. I don't know what's going on, okay? The NFL, every week, the rules change. I don't know. The bottom line is they don't like Des Bryant. You know what I'm saying? Des Bryant probably said something about Wisconsin. I don't know what happened. The refs don't like him, bro, because everything is always getting overturned. And I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. But based on the rule and all the stuff that they're saying, it's not a catch. You know what I'm saying? It's not a catch. And uh, pretty much uh, that's what happened. Um, the Cowboys season is, should be officially over at this point. Um, I don't see any way that the Cowboys can make the playoffs. And um, the Cowboy fans are going to have to deal with that. It's pretty much over, man. They had a chance early in the game. You know, Darren McFadden came out, started off with a big run. Matt Cassell is garbage. Bro, Matt, C Matt Castle is garbage. He's garbage. Listen, Matt Castle is so bad. He is so bad. He is a bum. He does not deserve to wear a Dallas Cowboy uniform. He does not to be... He After the season, if he makes it as a backup quarterback on any team, the person that signs him should be ashamed of themselves. He is a freaking bum. And that is it. There's no if, ands, or buts about it, bro. He's garbage. He's a horrible piece of crap. He's an embarrassment to himself, his community, the organization, his family, everything. He's a bum. 
And this is why you got to give Bill Belichick credit. I know he had a decent season when he was in Kansas City, whatever, bro. But Bill Belichick made this guy look like a star, man. He's the one that always make these bum-ass quarterbacks like Hoyer and all these other bums look decent and then get rid of them for high, outrageous draft picks and then they look like bums everywhere else. You know, these guys, man, I, you know, Matt Castle, man, I, I'm disappointed in the Cowboys, but I'm disappointed more in their choices of backup quarterback. You know, I know you think that Tony Romo is going to make it through the whole season, but you know Tony Romo is always hurt. You can't have these kind of guys as backups. You can't pass on Johnny Manziel. You can't do a lot of things, Cowboys. And a lot of the things that happen, you know, you got to blame the Cowboys for it, man. But Matt Castle, at the end of the day, he ended that drive with a pick. He's a bum, man. He, he's just, he's one of the worst. He's one of the worst quarterbacks I've ever seen play this game, ever. Ever. And that's including Ryan Leaf. The Packers, look, man. Eddie fat ass Lacey is starting to play better. When you have a better running game, it's gonna it, listen, bro. You know, Starks is a Starks is a beast. I think Starks is way better than um, you know, this other bum that's coming out, Eddie Lacey. But you know, Aaron Rodgers had a decent game. The receivers, you know, a uh, 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 decent game. Um, they did enough to win at home. But at the end of the day, the run game is back. Eddie Lacey's looking big. He's bringing guys into the end zone with him pretty much. You know, you know, Starks on a draw play when it's like third and fucking forever. He runs it in for six. You know what I'm saying, bro? When you have a run game like that, and, you know, McCarthy allegedly is calling plays now, bro, allegedly, because they're winning like this, he's allegedly calling plays. Look, man, it is what it is. Not a lot to talk about with this game. You beat the Cowboys. Everybody's beating the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yo, listen, bro, people with no legs can beat the Cowboys. It's, it's just been an embarrassing thing for them. Jason Garrett needs to leave. Matt Castle needs to leave. Whedon needs to leave. They need to just get rid of everybody, bro. Just leave the offensive line and get rid of everybody. They suck, man. It, it, this is this is completely a joke. But now we can at least put to rest that the Cowboys cannot make the playoffs. It's over, Cowboys fans. It's done. And finally, our Sunday night game, Patriots at the Texans. We all know that J.J. Watt played with a broken hand. He was trying to be like um, uh, meaty claws. Uh, Jason Pierre-Paul wearing, wearing the glove or whatever like that. Um, but it didn't work out for him, bro. They double teamed them, they triple teamed them, they did whatever they had to do. Jadavian Clowney had a decent night, but all in a losing effort. I don't think he should have been the number one pick. I do see a lot of upside with him, but if he's not able to do a little bit more and help J.J. Watt out, what, what the hell was the point, man? What was the point? You know, J.J. Watt running around like a one-armed bandit getting manhandled and shit like that. You got Brian Hoyer at quarterback, which is the worst quarter. He's probably the worst quarterback next to um, Matt Ryan. He's probably right below, um, no, he's right above Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is the worst, in my opinion, the worst quarterback in the league. Um, but Brian Hoyer is right there. Uh, you know, well, Matt Castle? No, no, Matt Castle's first. Then Matt Castle's first. Then uh, Matty Dry Ice. And then Brian Hoyer. The Texans are garbage. Let's just say that. Patriots came out. You know, Gronk, he's looking good. I'm so happy that his injury wasn't season-ending. But let's be honest. The Patriots are a completely different team with Gronkowski. With Gronkowski, the sky is at the limit, bro. Space and whatever else is up there is the limit when Gronkowski's out there. And Tom Brady just felt a lot better having Grunk out there. He just he just looked like a kid in the candy store, bro. He he feels that he can win anything when Grunk is out there. Um, Butler played well. We all know him as a Super Bowl hero because the Seahawks are dumb as fuck. Um, but overall, my biggest difference was seeing Grunk out there suited up. When Grunk is on the field, the Patriots are a different team. The receivers play better. All those little you know role players they come out, they play a lot better. The defense play better, and it was just it was a complete onslaught. It was a complete onslaught of the Texans, uh, but at the end of the day, the Texans can't score. Defensively, they played okay. You know what I'm saying? Even though they had 27 points, they played okay. They, they, they punted a lot. You know, the Texans couldn't score. Hoyer is a bum. Brian Ho Yo, man, these, these quarterbacks need to just go all of them together and just be just put yo, just put them in a in one of those like uh transportation um boxes and, and just, just ship them off someplace. Because this, this is embarrassing for the teams to, to look out there like you go into a game and, and just say you're a Houston Texans fan. And like, yeah, man, the Texans are going to win. And then they're like, who's the quarterback? Brian Hoyer. Like, how can you believe that you're going to win the game with him at quarterback? You can't believe that. J.J. Watt and them boys playing their brains out, you know what I'm saying, doing whatever they got to do. And then your quarterback is Brian Hoyer. Come on, man. It's not fair. To, it's not fair to the fans, owners. Come on, guys. You're making billions of dollars. Do something better than that. Do something better. Get rid of this guy, bro. He should not be playing in this league at any time, at any place. But on another note, you guys are going to mess around and let the Patriots get their swag back and get their get their players back. And then I don't know what's going to happen with the AFC now. If the Patriots are able to get grunk and their weapons, you know, whatever, you know, are decent weapons for Tom Brady, as far as Amadola and the mother boys, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. 
I think the Steelers can beat the Patriots, but you don't want to get the Patriots, a team of the Patriots, their swag back. And that's what I think just happened. So we got to be very careful with this and we got to watch it and see exactly what happens. But it was good to see Grunk back out on the field, man. Kudos to Grunk. I hope he, you know, finishes off the season healthy. And um, it makes the, he makes the Patriots a whole different team. Like I said, tonight's game, Monday, December 14th, is the Giants and the Dolphins. I do expect the Giants to win this game, but I wouldn't be surprised if they lose because they suck. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this recap. Um, definitely download it for free on iTunes and Android. Follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you're thinking about, what's going on with your team. Who's your favorite team? Tweet it to me, at World. Until next time, one love.